a lot of people think that Europe and the UK are safe from small, very super affordable electric cars in China. The small electric cars in China that sell for an average price of five and a half thousand US dollars, they say they're not a problem for Europe or for the UK because, well, they can't be legally sold in those countries. Well, sorry to say, that is 100% wrong. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Now, I have a look at this, I've had a look at the standards for vehicles in Europe and in the UK. And actually, most of these Chinese EVs being made in China do qualify. They have the requisite number of airbags. They have AEB. They, they have most of the safety requirements needed. And the ones that don't, I don't think it'd be that difficult for them to get those standards. Now, if you think, no, 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 this is wrong. This is, this is me being pro-China, which I don't believe I am, but some people think that I am. Well, let's have a look at the smallest, most affordable electric car being sold in the UK. In fact, it's much smaller than the small quadricycle EVs being sold in China. The Arc Zero electric quadricycle is actually the UK's cheapest EV. It costs 7,600 US dollars. Incredibly, it's actually smaller, quite a bit smaller than cars like the Wuling Hongwan Mini EV long range edition, which is actually about 3.2 meters long. Now this car, designed and built by Arc, a London-based EV startup that describes itself as the UK's first all-electric car company, is called the Zero, and it's a rival for the Citroen Amy, the Opel Rox Electric, the Fiat Topolino, and other similar electric quadricycles. As you can see, there's now a number of electric quadricycles for sale in Europe, and yes, they are definitely selling. There's nothing stopping them from selling, even though a lot of people would say they aren't very safe. I probably agree with that, but they're a lot safer though than riding a bicycle or an electric bicycle or an electric scooter uh, or an electric bicycle. Yeah, you see my point. The company says its goal with the Arc Zero, besides making money, obviously, is to drive forward the UK's transition to a cleaner and greener transportation system and to make cars sustainable. Now, you have to admit, the size of these cars is, it's small, very small, but is it sustainable in terms of energy? much more so than a big SUV, that's for sure. As the photos show, the Arc Zero is quite small. In fact, like I said, it's smaller than a Wuling Hong One Mini EV. It's 98 inches long, which is 2.5 meters. It's 47.3 inches wide. That's 1.2 meters wide, and it's 64 inches high, which is 1.6 meters in height. It has a 67.7 inch wheelbase, which is around 1.7 meters. This means it's actually shorter, but taller than a Citroen Amy. And it's actually smaller than almost every major bestseller quadricycle in China. In fact, quite a bit smaller in all ways, whether that's height or width or even length. And it's more expensive than the Chinese versions as well, which in many cases have better safety options. Not to say you should buy a Chinese version. That's probably not a good idea, seeing as they're not currently on sale in Europe, but they could be very soon. Interestingly, it actually is made in some ways like a Tesla. The bodywork and the chassis are unified into a single unit made entirely of aluminium with a monocoque construction, enhancing the vehicle's strength and its rigidity. This provides additional safety, structural rigidity, etc. Aluminium was chosen because it allows for greater energy absorption and dissipation compared to a steel body in the event of an accident. In addition, aluminium is lighter and doesn't corrode. Now, Honestly, I don't think this is actually true in terms of being lighter and not corroding. That's absolutely true. But saying that uh, aluminium absorbs more energy in a crash doesn't seem to be true based on most of the research studies that I've seen. I'm not convinced this thing's going to do much to protect anyone in a crash. And one of the things that's interesting is when I first saw this car, I thought, can you fit two people in the front? And you can't. It's not wide enough. You can fit a person in the front and a person in the back. Given the size and the fact the body is made of aluminium, it actually is incredibly light. It's, a, it's the lightest electric car that I've ever seen. It weighs only 490 kilograms, which is 1,078 pounds. Range is 50 miles or 80 kilometers, so a much shorter range than most of the Chinese versions of this, and it can reach a top speed of 28 miles an hour. From its three horsepower 2.2 kilowatt battery, from its three horsepower 2.2 kilowatt motor, it has an 80 amp hour lithium battery. So in other words, it's quite small. 
like I said, the Wuthering Hong Mini is cheaper and it has more range, significantly more powerful. It can actually do 100 kilometers an hour, which I think makes it a bit safer than this and is significantly bigger. So I don't think it's really fair and reasonable for people to continue to make these comments saying that Chinese EVs can't, or at least affordable ones, won't sell in Europe because they can't. They're legally not able to. Well, clearly they legally are able to. The question isn't so much can they. In my opinion, the question is when will they? I mean, when will car manufacturers or just basically importers say, you know what, uh, this EV here in China, it's cheaper than what we can make. People want them and it's actually affordable. Now, I'm not saying this is necessarily a good thing that China is taking over the automotive industry, which they are. I'm more saying that this is what's happening and it's really pretty much inevitable. Now, unlike his competitors, this model comes in only a single specification. It has a sunroof, a backup camera, LED lights, a central LCD infotainment screen, Bluetooth connectivity, and it comes in four different colors, red, black, white, and gray. Now, I'm actually a big fan of this, but in comparison to many of its com competitors, well, for example, in China, it's very, very expensive. You can get cars for about half this price in China. The question I'm posing to you guys here, do you think still that Chinese EVs won't potentially take up a huge segment of the market in Europe? Or do you think that they possibly will? I'm curious to know what everyone thinks here. Let me know in the comments and thank you for watching.